Recently, Angstronomics, a website dedicated to the semiconductor industry, published a supposedly revelatory article about AMD's RGNA3. The details therein are quite surprising, as they contradict those of earlier rumors and supposed leaks, namely, the amount of infinity cache that RGNA3 will supposedly have. According to the article, each RGNA3 GPU will be comprised of seven chiplets that are combined to form a single unit. The core chiplet is referred to as the graphics core die, or GCD, and the six supplementary chiplets are referred to as multi-cache dies, or MCDs. Furthermore, the GCD and the MCDs will be produced via different process nodes, which means that the transistors that comprise them will be of different densities. Both the GCD and the MCDs will be made by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, better known as TSMC. However, while the GCD will be made via TSMC's 5 nanometer process node, the MCDs will be made via the company's older, cheaper, and less dense 6 nanometer process node. The reason for this is AMD's goal to balance costs and an improvement in power consumption. The GCD will naturally consume the most power, so building it via the smaller and less power consuming 5 nanometer process node will greatly reduce the amount of power that the overall completely assembled chip will consume. On the other hand, the MCDs will collectively consume far less power than the GCD, hence the reduction in power consumption that they would experience as a result of being built via the 5 nanometer process node would be minimal and not worth the extra cost of the newer, smaller node. Additionally, according to Angstronomics, the 6 MCDs will house all of the infinity cache. The amount that Navri31, the top chip of RDNA3, will have will purportedly differ between two variants. The main variant will purportedly have 16 megabytes per MCD for a total of 96 megabytes, and a 3D stacked version will purportedly have 32 megabytes per MCD for a total of 192 megabytes. The first value is less than the 128 megabytes of AMD's current flagship cards, the RX 6900 XT and the RX 6950 XT, which both contain variants of the Navi 21 chip. This may seem alarming, but it actually isn't so. Considering that Infinity Cache is meant to supplement the bandwidth of SD RAM, due to being limited to GDDR6 SD RAM, whose speeds are 16 gigabits per second and 18 gigabits per second, and all of whose bus widths are 256 bits, the highest SD RAM bandwidth of RDNA2 is 576 gigabytes per second. However, the MCDs of both variants of Navi31, according to Angstronomics, will each contain 64 bit bus widths for a collective bus width of 384 bits. And, according to sources other than Angstronomics, Navi31 will have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 that run at 20 gigabits per second. Hence, the SD RAM bandwidth of both variants of Navi31 would be 960 gigabytes per second. So, assuming that the purported 96 megabytes of infinity cache will run at the same speed as Navi21's 128 megabytes of infinity cache, the resulting value would be 864.15 gigabytes per second. Adding this value to the bandwidth of Navi31's SD RAM would amount to a total effective bandwidth of 1,824.15 gigabytes per second. This is 5.6% greater than the effective bandwidth of Navi21. However, if the 96 megabytes of Infinity Cache were run at a high enough speed, its bandwidth could be even greater than that of Navi21's despite its lower quantity. As for the secondary variant of Navi31, assuming that its purported 192 megabytes of Infinity Cache will run at the same speed as Navi21's 128 megabytes, its bandwidth would be 1,728.3 gigabytes per second. Adding this value to the bandwidth of Navi31's SD RAM would amount to a total effective bandwidth of 2,688.3 gigabytes per second. This is 55.56% greater than the effective bandwidth of Navi21. And that's it for this news report on PC gaming hardware. Be sure to thumb this video up, leave some comments below, and hit the subscribe button. Also, please visit and register for an account at eternalgaff.com. Peace out.